And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a listening game. Uh, this is called Igloo Pop, and it is a game about an Eskimo who has decided to go to the supermarket in order to get fish sticks. Uh, but instead he encounters some igloos and shakes them, uh, trying to figure out how many fish sticks might be inside, but it turns out there's kids inside. Uh, and it has one of the craziest stories that I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but this is a game for uh, anywhere between, I think it's two and six players, it plays really quickly, and it's going to be shaking these little igloos to see how many beads are inside, or try and figure out how many beads are inside, and then bet on those igloos in order to try and get victory points. So real quick, why don't we look inside the box and see what you get. Uh, we'll look at how it plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final opinion on this interesting genre of game. So here you can see the components for Igloo Pop. Now this is going to be a game in a genre that doesn't have many games in it. This is a listening game. Uh, you're going to be shaking these igloos, trying to figure out how many beads are inside them. Each player is going to have a set of playing pieces. They have little round discs. These are called thalers in the game. Uh, it doesn't matter, discs, whatever. These are going to earn you points at the end of the game for how many you have left and how many you've collected from other players. Now, since each player has their own, let's move these out to the side. I just want them there so you can see what they are. Uh, in addition to that, there's all these little igloos. There are several plastic igloos. I think there's 12 of them, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, and you are going to be using these to try and earn points by guessing how many beads are inside of them. Now, at the beginning of each round, you're going to lay out nine cards. Uh, these are going to be cards that you're going to be betting on by placing the igloos on them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you'll have nine cards out there. And these cards are going to have numbers and Eskimos on them. So you'll see, for example, here, we have the five card, which simply has number five, and it has three Eskimos on it because whoever wins this card would get three points. We also have a card that has two numbers on it. For example, we have five and six. You'll note two Eskimos. It's worth two points only because you can win this with either a five or a six, so it's a little bit easier card to win. And then we have cards with three numbers on it. We have 8, 9, 10. This one only has one Eskimo on it. It's only worth one point because there are three potential numbers that can win this card. Once you've laid all this down, the youngest player is going to count to three and every player is going to reach into here and they're going to grab one of these Eskimos and they're going to shake it and they're going to try and guess how many beads are in these Eskimos. They can take one at a time, they can shake it, they can either decide to bet with this Eskimo or place it back and then they can take another Eskimo. So they're gonna shake it, they're gonna try and figure out how many beads are in it. So let's say, for example, maybe the green player picks this one up, they think there are five Eskimos in here. So they're going to take this one, they're gonna place it on the five. That is their bet that this Eskimo contains five beads and they're going to move on, they're gonna grab another, es or another sorry, uh, igloo, they're gonna grab another igloo and they're gonna shake it, see how many beads are inside of it. Uh, so maybe they think there's, you know, four or three in this one. Well, they're going to look around. There are no fours or threes, so maybe they would simply put this one back in the center. And maybe yellow grabs one. They shake it. And they're going to say maybe there's nine beads in this one. They're going to bet that there. Uh, and blue picks one up, and they think, hey, this one's got a few beads in it. Maybe it also has five. And purple picks one up and shakes it, and they think, well, mine has six in it. And you're going to go around like in this manner until everybody has decided they no longer want to place any igloos out onto these cards, or they run out of thalers and they can't place them, uh, and or all the igloos are placed. And once you're done with that, you're going to go around to each individual card and check all the igloos there to see if any of them match the numbers on the card. So, for example, we have this one over here that has five on it. We're going to check Blue's igloo first. It has three. This is an incorrect bid. His thaler comes off and stays there, and the igloo goes back into the center. Now we're going to check Green's, and they're going to look at their number, and it is indeed five. Um, and this is going to come off. The thaler is going to go back to Green. They get to keep their own thaler. They also get Blue's thaler since they, they were wrong, and they're going to get this card. So in this case, they have kept their own point. They have earned a point from blue, and they get three points from this card. If, for example, everyone had been wrong, everyone would lose their Thaler, and the card would not be taken. However, if blue had been right, let's say, for example, this was on the five and six card, and green had six and blue had five, so they're both right, green would keep their piece, blue would keep their piece, and whoever had the higher number would get the card, so six from green would get the card. So everybody gets to keep their piece for being right, but only the person who is the highest number gets to keep the card. 
And you go around resolving them, these in order or whatever order you want. It doesn't really matter. Figuring them out. So we'll look here. Yellow guessed 7, 8, or 9. Well, it's 9, so they'd get this one. And purple guessed 8, 9, or 10. Well, this one is uh, 6, so they're not right. They would lose their Thaler, and this would go back in the center. All of the Igloos would go back in the center. You'd deal out 9 more cards and go around again. The game will end after you get to a round where you can no longer replenish nine cards from the top of this deck. Uh, so there's going to be a certain amount of rounds. Uh, and after the round where you can no longer put all nine out because uh, you can't refill them, there's not enough, you're going to end the game. And at that point, whoever has the most points by accumulating uh, Thalers from their opponents, by keeping their own Thalers, and by collecting cards is going to be the winner. And there you have it. That is Igloo Pop. Uh, now, this is a unique game. As I said, there's really only a couple of games in the genre of listening games. There's this, there's Mord in Morosa, uh, which is a game about dropping detectives or dropping pieces into a tower and trying to figure out where a murder happened. Uh, but other than that, I can't think of too many games that really revolve around a central mechanic of listening to uh, different pieces and trying to figure out where or what is happening. Uh, the game is really light. It's not a difficult game. As a matter of fact, it's probably intended for children. I didn't look at the ages on it. Uh, but it's one that fits into a, a interesting spot in a collection uh, for something very light that is out, outside of the norm and something you can play occasionally but isn't something you're going to want to play frequently or many times in a row, in my opinion. So it's not a bad game. I wouldn't call it a great game either, but I would call it an interesting part of a collection, uh, one that I'm glad that I have, and one that will see the table occasionally but not frequently. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.